So now in this video, we have a couple op amps that are fading in the LED on and off completely right there, which I think is a cool looking effect. The uh, two op amps are on the same integrated circuit. It's a dual op amp integrated circuit, the LM358. The number two op amp is wired as a voltage follower, which means the output will be the same voltage as the non-inverting input right here, thanks to direct negative feedback right there. We have the output connected directly to the inverting input, and always remember the output wants to be more like the non-inverting input than the inverting input. So in this case, to do so, it has to be the exact same voltage. Hopefully that makes sense. It has to maintain the same voltage at uh, both inputs. The only way to do that is have the output be the same voltage as the non-inverting input right there. So that's gonna follow what the capacitor does. We have the anode of the red LED, in this case to the positive five volts there, the cathode headed to the output there. So it's gonna light up when the output is connected to ground for the most part. Uh, when the capacitor is completely discharged about zero volts. As the capacitor charges, the voltage is gonna rise, the output is gonna rise, output voltage. As it gets closer to five volts, the LED is gonna get dimmer. At about 3.5 volts, the LED will be completely off and our uh, higher uh, voltage as well. Then, when the uh, capacitor starts uh, discharging, lowering the voltage, it's gonna drop the voltage as it gets farther from five volts, closer to zero volts. Then the LED is gonna start lighting up again, getting brighter as the voltage keeps dropping. When it gets to about zero volts, it'll be as bright as it can be. The number one op amp is wired in a stable mode. We looked at this in the last video. So it's going to keep going the output high and low based on the timing that we set here. So the timing is the capacitor charging and discharging. The uh, reference voltage to determine whether it's charging or discharging is the non-inverting input here. So we have uh, feedback coming back here. These two resistors are trying to keep it to about 2.5 volts approximately, but when the output is high, and we're gonna use a lower value resistor here so that it uh, really bumps up uh, the voltage, and uh, that comes to the inverting input. So it's gonna get uh, pretty close to what the output uh, voltage is, which I think is about probably like four volts since we don't really have a load here. And uh, so the capacitor has to charge up to probably about four volts. Then uh, when the capacitor passes, uh, whatever the voltage we have here, because this will be pulling it down a little bit, then, uh, that gets higher, this one's lower, sets the output low, and the voltage is gonna drop down pretty close to ground, because we'll have ground at the output there and a low value resistor there, sucking it down to ground uh, pretty good. The capacitor is going to discharge and uh, keep discharging until it basically gets uh, to ground. Then uh, once it gets to ground, it will have a lower voltage. This one will have a higher voltage, setting the output back high again. It's just gonna keep repeating the process. We looked at that in the last video. I had a higher value resistor here though, so that hysteresis range isn't as wide. I want it really wide for this one so that we change the voltage across the resistor a lot more, and uh, or across the LED, I mean, a lot more. So it gets brighter and darker than it would have with the higher value resistor here. Um, but in uh, any case, uh, main thing is this is a stable. It never stops. It just keeps going high and low to do that process I just mentioned. And now we'll take a closer look at the physical circuit. Two equal value resistors, 10K, to the supply rails, five volts. Where they come together, we got about two and a half volts that it wants it to be, but we have this lower value resistor that is connected to the output and then coming to the non-inverting input right there. So it's actually gonna make the voltage much closer to the output voltage there. Then we have the 100K resistor here, charging the 10 microfarad capacitor and discharging it, depending on the voltage at uh, the output, as we mentioned before. So at that uh, same spot, we have this jumper going right there, which is monitoring the capacitor voltage. Coming over here, which makes this op amp also measure the capacitor voltage. So we got plus minus output here. Same pin layout is over there, just shifted down one. Remember to power the integrated circuit as well. I didn't show that on the schematic, but you have to do that, of course. So in any case, that brings us to the uh, resistor because uh, this jumper, just going from the output to the inverting input, ultimately 
uh, when you have a direct connection from the output to the inverting input, that means that the output has to stay the same voltage as a non-inverting input. It has to go up or down as needed to equalize those voltages. And thus, when you go directly to the inverting input, it has to go right to whatever voltage the non-inverting input is. This resistor, 220 ohms, because we're using 5 volts, is uh, just protecting the LED. That's all it's doing. So, in any case, when the output is low, pastor is uh, almost completely discharged, uh, that's basically a direct connection to ground, the LED lights up fully because it's coming from the positive supply. Long lead anode up, uh, short lead cathode down, headed towards the output. And then as the voltage rises, it gets closer to 5 volts. That's less voltage difference. The LED fades down. You need at least uh, about a volt and a half for the LED to light up a little bit. So once you get to about uh, 3.5 volts, and above, the LED should be off completely.